Good evening. I will now call the February 15th, 2022 Historic Preservation Ordinance Ad Hoc Committee meeting to order. Items listed on the agenda may be taken out of order. Two or more agenda items for consideration may be combined. And in, in, in any time on the agenda, oh, sorry, and any item on the agenda may be removed or related discussion may be delayed at any time. The agenda has been properly posted and all four members of the committee are in attendance. The public may view the meeting live via the city's website and can provide comments via email or calling in as well as in person. First item on the agenda is the initial public comment period. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. Each person has up to five minutes to speak on a specific agenda item. The public may call 702-589-9629 to provide public comment. Sir, do you have any comments to make? I do. Okay. I'm just trying to figure this all out. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Um, uh, we will close the first public comment period. First item on the agenda for possible action approval of the minutes of March 29th, 2021 regular meeting. Do I have a motion for approval? I'd be happy to move that we approve the minutes. I have a second. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is approved unanimously. Uh, second item, second agenda item for possible action, approval of the minutes of the April 26, 2021 regular meeting. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes also. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion is approved unanimously. Next item on the agenda is item number three for possible action, committee review and direction regarding the SHPO model ordinance. Uh, staff, would you like to provide a report, please? Good evening, members of the committee. Uh, for the record, uh, Michael Mays, Community Development Director. Um, <laughs> Since this committee last met last year, uh, there were uh, two objectives for follow-up from that last meeting. Um, the first of which was to move forward with um, reaching out to the community to get their input on the committee's draft ordinance. Uh, this occurred in June of 2021 where the city hosted uh, two uh, open houses. Um, all of the property owners within the historic district, so over 500 property owners, received notification of those open houses as well as um, promotion of the uh, open houses on social media and website and other opportunities. At those meetings, uh, ad hoc committee members were there uh, as well as staff to answer the public's questions regarding the proposed ordinance 
and to discuss next steps. Um, the um, invitation was included in your packet as background. Uh, one of the other objectives at those open houses was to obtain community feedback regarding the um, proposed ordinance. Uh, the feedback that was received was included in your packet um, for your review as well. So um, engaging the community was the first action. The second action was to submit the draft ordinance to the State Historic <laughs> Preservation Office, uh, which was done, and the city did receive comments back from the State Historic Preservation Office, or what we refer to as SHPO. Those comments are also included in your packet for your review. Additionally, uh, since this committee last met, uh, there was a concurrent process that the city was undertaking with review of adopting a historic preservation plan. That preservation uh, plan was approved by the city council last year. Included in that plan were uh, several recommendations um, to look at the city's um, historic preservation ordinance and proposed changes. Um, the comments from the consultant who prepared that study, the Nevada Preservation Foundation, uh, is attached to your packet. Uh, in particular, one of the recommendations that the consultant was providing was as the community is looking at changes to the historic preservation ordinance, uh, to um, consider an administrative track versus a uh, commission track and to look at contributing properties and non-contributing properties and looking at different approaches to the review of those projects. What was included in your packet is the example provided by the Nevada Preservation Foundation. Again, it's just an example. It's not a, a recommendation, but we thought it was important to include that in the material as the committee reconvened tonight to discuss next steps with your recommendation to the city council on um, proposed changes to the historic preservation ordinance. So what staff is looking for uh, in, in, uh, for uh, committee direction, we tried to frame in three questions contained in the staff report. Uh, the first is, do you agree with the uh, SHPO recommendations regarding the ordinance changes? Second, should staff make revisions to the draft ordinance to treat non-contributing and contributing properties differently following a matrix, either like the one that was contained or based on recommendations from the committee? And third, seeking direction on next steps regarding your recommendation to the city council. And with that, uh, we can answer any questions. I had, a question. I had a question on your question number two. Um, it's a question, if not a proposed um, motion to dismiss this committee from addressing question number two regarding the, the matrix and review of the matrix or the non-contributing versus contributing. And the reason being is that this committee was tasked to work on and provide guidance on the ordinance. In my mind, in my brain, <laughs> um, that is a, the, the ordinance is a separate track of getting the city on board for um, having a, a historic preservation program. Um, with teeth, so to speak. The other two tasks are uh, working on or updating the design guidelines, which is what the Historic Preservation Committee is currently working on, uh, along with the, the, the um, consultant, the Historic Preservation Consultant. Um, in addition to those two tasks, then there's the Certificate of Appropriateness process, which is what the matrix um, is basically a version of, that's just one version of a certificate of appropriateness to determine uh, what do the property owners can and can't do in relation to the design guidelines, the code, 
and the Secretary of Interior standards. I think it's too soon or it's just not appropriate at this time for we as a committee, um, nor is it part of our purview to, to address number two. So I would like to not talk about it or work on it or address it in any great depth this evening. Um, because also the other thing is I think that the contributing and non-contributing question that you're asking about is already addressed within the, 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 um, the ordinance that we've, we're looking at. Um, and it can be addressed again when the guidelines are revised and the certificate of appropriateness process is drafted. And both of those processes go through review by the city council as well. So any discussion or uh, additions to that or? <laughs> I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, 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 I'm pretty sure I understand what you're saying, but my question is then at what part in the process does this get added? And then who would be in charge of determining how we differentiate between contributing and non-contributing? In my mind, that would be um, working, that would be staff um, along with the Historic Preservation Committee as well as seeking public input on that. Um, it's just part of the process of establishing a historic preservation program in the community. It's a matter of, it's in my mind, it's, a, it's splitting. You can you know, deal with your historic preservation program all at once or separate it out. And it, this committee was not tasked to deal with the certificate of appropriateness or the design guidelines all mentioned in the, the code um, and we, we recognize, or I recognize, that those have to be dealt with and, and worked on and updated, but that's not what our committee is um, tasked to do. Madam Chair, if I could ask a clarifying question of our attorney. Um, so the understanding of the matrix, it's not, um, um, since it's addressing procedure and how the review of um, uh, the historic preservation ordinance is regulated within the community, wouldn't it need to be contained within the ordinance? Yes, that's correct. If the, if the um, city were to move forward with a matrix approach versus um, right now how the ordinance is drafted, all a certificate of appropriateness applications go to the committee or the commission, I should say. Um, so it is within uh, the purview of, of how the ordinance is drafted if uh, certain types of things affecting contributing properties versus non-contributing properties were to go to the committee for review or to the historic preservation officer um, for administrative level review for a, a simpler approval process for a more um, run-of-the-mill type improvements, if you will. So yes, it does affect the ordinance, the, the matrix. Um, the ordinance would have to allow for the matrix um, in order for the matrix to be used. Can I offer that, in a sense, we already have a matrix or a process. It's um, when somebody is... Uh, about to work on a historic property, they contact the city and um, and it depends on if they're seeking a building permit or not. Um, in my mind, the matrix is just a, a another version of that application process and the review process that is currently underway within the city um, with city staff, the commission, the historic preservation committee um, and the um, historic preservation professional that's um, the contractor. So I get it that there's the matrix is important or a version of the matrix in my mind is just a version of a certificate of appropriateness and a process for what the city or what um, property owners, what the commission, what city staff um, are expected to do when working on their historic properties and the approval process and what's included, whether it's um, contributing or non-contributing. 
And that's already, we're already doing that now with our current process. There's already a form that talks about is it contributing or non-contributing. Right, right, and that's determined by the design guidelines. But under the draft ordinance as it's, as it's drafted, all certificate of appropriateness applications would go through the commission. So if, if the city were to, um, the, the, in other words, the matrix could not be used unless there was a change to the draft ordinance. I think we're saying the same thing <laughs> in that, I mean, right now, if we didn't have this matrix, suppose this wasn't included in here and we went forward with the ordinance as is, it would just be a matter of um, changing and adjusting our current application process, perhaps utilizing this version of the matrix in order to go that, um, um, to address what's in the ordinance as well as what the process is the application the process in the current ordinance would require all certificate of appropriateness to go to the commission. The proposed matrix proposes to divide uh, what certificate appropriateness applications would go to the commission versus just administrative approval based upon what the proposed improvement is and whether it's a contributing or non-contributing property. So the question that has been presented to you in the staff report that um, as chair, you're, you're welcome to uh, remove that from consideration if, if your other committee members agree, but I'm saying that um, that question for you is to, is to ask you uh, whether the city should go uh, re-review the ordinance and look at using a matrix type of model, which would allow, uh, which would allow um, different levels of review based on what the proposed improvement is. So that, that's the question that's pro, uh, proposed before you today. You as chair, and again, if your fellow committee members do not feel you want to consider that question, you could uh, remove it uh, with a motion. So um, currently with the matrix that you gave us, it kind of talks about, I know this came from another um, state, um, an, another area. So I don't know that I'm completely comfortable with the idea of adopting all of it because I don't know if it's applicable to us and it has to be applicable to us. Um, and there is a differentiate aiding between contributing and non-contributing, but we may choose to look at it differently. So um, if we don't address that here, I guess my question is, then who does address that and who does make that matrix? Because I, um, I guess I'm not completely comfortable just adopting that one that isn't specific to our area. The question before you isn't to adopt the matrix that's proposed in the packet. The question before you is whether conceptually you would want to utilize a matrix similar to what uh, other cities have used. If, if, you, if the, the ad hoc committee wants to go that route, then the city would develop uh, our own recommendation, recommended matrix that would be different um, than, than the Independence uh, Missouri example. Um, that is more uh, tailored toward Boulder City um, if the committee wishes to go that route. Currently, as drafted, everything goes to commission review. So if the committee would prefer uh, the draft ordinance stay that way, then all certificate appropriateness applications would go to the commission. So I think ultimately, Madam Chair, this is a decision of the committee. Do you want to include this type of concept in your recommendation to the city council or not? You could say, no, we're not interested, and then you will recommend whatever the revised draft ordinance is, and that is presented to the city council for the city to council to decide how to proceed. Or you could say, we do want to explore that concept, again, not this matrix, but whatever the committee would like staff to work on, we come back to you, incorporate your recommendations into the ordinance, you review, and then recommend onto the council. That's the committee's choice. We just wanted to make sure we presented that opportunity to this committee, because at last time this committee met, we weren't aware of this matrix. 
This came after, and we wanted to make sure you had this information. The way, though, that you describe your question, um, it's Madam Attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany. Um, <laughs> Brittany's fine. Um, <laughs> um, is, yeah, I would be, I, um, I don't know if it would be appropriate for this committee to take on the task of looking at a version of this and considering it. Happy to make that part of our purview. Um, but what the question says is, you're asking us to perhaps make revisions to the draft ordinance in order to meet the, the matrix. My well, point is, is that the, the ordinance is quote unquote fine as is, and you will make the matrix match the ordinance, not make the ordinance match the matrix. Because I think the ordinance does discuss contributing and non-contributing, who does what and how and when, and the matrix or whatever we're gonna call it, certificate of appropriateness will follow the guidance that's in here. Um, that's a that is incorrect. So the oh. the ordinance contemplates everything, all certificate of appropriateness applications going to the commission for review. If the committee wishes to uh, look at the concept of a matrix, only certain certificate of appropriateness applications would go to the commission for review, and others would go to uh, the just the historic preservation officer for administrative review. Things that are more simple, run of the uh, mill, uh, more common uh, types of improvements or repairs to historically significant properties. Other things that um, are more complex or, or uh, we, again, you would decide what goes to the commission and what goes to administrative review. But that's why the ordinance would have to change because currently everything goes to the commission. So if you want to explore the concept of a matrix, then you would have to change the ordinance to allow certain things to be uh, uh, approved of administratively. So when you say it goes before the commission, is that just for review or for approval? You'll need to show me where it says the committee commission has to approve everything. Okay. Because I didn't, I missed that. <laughs> Okay, so if you look at section 1127.5, subsection C on page seven, the procedure for obtaining a certificate of appropriateness may be initiated by the city for all city owned landmarks or proposed work within a historic district or by the individual property owner of the subject property located within the district. The application must be submitted to the Community Development Department for review and preliminary approval by the Historic Preservation Officer and final approval by the Commission prior to the commencement of any work. Okay. So my understanding, again, this is my reading of other certificates of appropriateness as well as guidance. Um, that approval can be within either the design guidelines or the certificate of appropriateness process by which the, we, um, the commission, I should say, approves the certificate of appropriateness matrix that discusses what's um, contributing and non-contributing. We're therefore approving it at that point, not here. So it's a procedural approval in under that yeah, again, the ordinance would just have to slightly be amended to accommodate for that concept. It, it wouldn't be a significant change. It would just be a, a conceptual, and, th and that's why we're bringing it to you. When we held these public workshops, um, some of the concerns were that the approval process would be more red tape, so to speak. And so what we found was other jurisdictions use what's similar to this matrix, and that allows um, it, property owners to know, okay, well, if this is the improvement I'm making, then I can submit my application and it can be approved administ administratively. It doesn't have to be scheduled for the commission meeting, et cetera. 
And so just minor changes to the ordinance would have to be made in order to accommodate um, a matrix type concept. But again, that's within this committee's purview. If they, uh, if you don't feel that that's necessary, um, we can have everything go to the commission. Um, you know, that that's within your, your, your uh, scope. I guess I have a question just to, for my clarity, um, is the would the matrix itself be a part of the ordinance, or is it just that the ordinance uh, would account and refer to the fact that we that we have something like that? It can be done either way, um, but uh, more typically, the matrix is done um, administratively. Uh, you know, approved of as as uh, Chair Davenport pointed out, would be approved of by the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, but then, uh, but then once it's in the matrix. The, you know, so we wouldn't have to do a full ordinance change, but it can also be in the ordinance as well. It, it could be either. I mean, I think, I mean, personally, I don't have any, uh, any opposition to making so that the ordinance language can itself include or account for something like a matrix approach. However, as far as, you know, the need for, for this committee, especially if the matrix is more looked at as the guideline or, you know, is kind of outside of the ordinance, right? If it's not actually a part of the ordinance, then it's kind of outside of us on, you know, on what we think, you know, should be a part of the ordinance. It might be better, you know, for the Historic Preservation Commission, the, um, you know, staff, you know, and then ultimately for council to determine the exact, you know, what is and is not approved of in the matrix, but not necessarily for us here uh, to decide. So I guess that's kind of where, where my head's at. You know, if, 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 we, if we think that's a good approach and all we need to do is just say, let the, make sure that the ordinance accounts for this type of approach without us having to get into the weeds of whether or not those things are, you know, you know, should, you know, this is contributing, this is non-contributing. Once we start to get into the guidelines, then I think we're outside of our purview. So, you know, I think, you know, th that's where my head is at on this one right now. I would agree. I think if it's not necessary for this to be a part of the ordinance and it's a minor change at a later date, I think the commission itself is the more appropriate body to to make that determination about the matrix um, I don't see any problem with that Adam chair I guess what I would be wondering what is it that you which part or which section or what's the language that you're thinking because again I really think <laughs> that the, the approval by the Commission is dealt with within here when it talks about all the steps A, B, C, and D, um, but also um, within this matrix. But I'm fine if clarity is needed to address something like this, that's fine. I wouldn't call it a matrix because it's really the certificate of appropriateness. This is just... Um, Madam Chair, the maybe for of appropriateness is required. I guess clarification for staff. Um, Sorry. <laughs> is the committee interested in the ordinance treating non-contributing and contrib contributing properties differently in how it's regulated? I guess getting away from the matrix, I understand your first you feel that that's kind of getting in the weeds and that will happen later. But I think the central question is, and what was presented by the Nevada Preservation Foundation is that contributing and non-contributing properties could be reviewed differently because as the ordinance is written right now, every building permit that requires a certificate of appropriateness would need to go to the commission, regardless of whether it is a contributing or non-contributing property in the historic district. So if, if we can get that feedback from the committee, that would help us with what uh, eventually is presented to the city council for consideration. Sorry, I'm just thinking we have 527 or something like that can, um, properties within this district and over or close to half of them are non-contributing, right? So it's, it's there's, there's a mix here that we have of contributing, non-contributing. If everything came before the uh, commission, we could get pretty clogged up with little things and not be able to address the bigger things. 
Um, I, I think they should be treated differently simply by the nature that they are different. It doesn't mean that, that a non-contributing property shouldn't still try to contribute. It just means that because of the nature of how it is now, its, its requirements are going to look a little bit different. So I do think that they should be treated differently. I agree. And they are treated differently currently as well as as it's written here, as well as when we have, whenever we update the certificate of appropriateness process. It's, uh, to me, I think we're saying the same thing. You can either deal with it now or later. I just don't want to, um, I guess I'm not sure what your recommendations are for uh, making it more clear, I guess, in the, in the ordinance. Well, we could bring that back to you. We could make those clarifications and bring the draft ordinance back to you before you report to council. Okay. I was kind of hoping to, like, maybe this was my last meeting. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just think the SHPO made enough comments um, that address the contributing and non-contributing, as well as the fact that a certificate of appropriateness is required and has we have to work on that. And then it's within that certificate of appropriateness process, again, that is reviewed and approved by Historic Preservation Committee, Planning Commission, and the City Council. And that is where you would show or see, this is how we're going to treat contributing. This is how we're not going to treat um, contributing or non-contributing. That's where the, the rubber hits the road. Really? Currently, under the draft ordinance, um, the way it's written, all certificate of appropriateness applications, regardless of whether it's good for a contributing property or a non-contributing property, would have to go to the commission for final approval. I That's the way it's written. So the question is, do you want to uh, make a, a, a modification that would allow um, certificate appropriateness applications uh, for non-contributing properties? to go through an administrative process for certain types of improvements. I, I don't think you can do a blanket to say that all non-contributing buildings do not go before the commission because a non-contributing building within a historic district has an impact on the historic district. Right, it wouldn't be for non all non-contributing, it would be for certain types of improvements for a non-contributing property as determined by a matrix later to be approved. That's fine if yeah. you just want to say that in here. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, mean that, I, I don't, I don't I like mean, to dra <laughs> illegally draft um, <laughs> on the fly. <laughs> so that's, that's my only hesitation as to like, you know, providing um, suggested language, you know, because we do have to think about how it impacts um, the rest of the ordinance and make conforming changes and, and things like that. But that's essentially the concept we're asking. Um, you know, I could... Uh, make those changes, and if there's concerns. Um, it, it, I, I guess ultimately we want to make sure that what we are passing on to the City Council is an accurate reflection of the recommendation of this committee. So uh, I think part of um, the concern of staff is we don't want to make changes by what we think the committee is saying, present that to the City Council, and have the committee say, that's not what we said. That's why we want to make sure we have a clear understanding of the committee's recommendation. Um, well, I guess then uh, with that and in the talking about making a uh, minor change right there to the ordinance, um, as far as the comments go um, from SHPO, um, if we're ready to just, uh, if that's okay at this point, you know, I wasn't a part of the conversation, so I don't know if there was anything necessarily that was co contradictory to what the, the ad hoc committee had discussed beforehand, but it seemed to me that they were very reasonable changes and more so just making sure, you know, using appropriate, you know, la language was consistent and stuff like that. Um, you know, if we want to see those changes made along with the other one and then have, have it come back before us completely done so where we're not having the comments or anything like that and then say, this is ready to go, you know, and then that way we're not really discussing 
what's going to be in the matrix, what's going to all the other sort of stuff that can be handled at, at other levels and allow for public input through those other, those other channels that exist. And for here, that way we're just, we're focusing on the ordinance. What's the language gonna be in the ordinance? Uh, we'll have it come back before us. We can see it exactly as it's been um, uh, uh, changed so that it adopts the, the recommendations of SHPO and with the minor change so that we can make sure that, the, uh, that there is a administrative process, which of course will be determined later, not by this group, I think is what it sounds like, um, but by another, then I think that's where I'm, I'm ready to head that direction. And That makes sense to me. Anybody else yeah. have comments? I agree, totally. So do we need to make a motion to approve um, the changes? Everyone's saying yes, that the changes the SHPO made are good. No one has a concern with any of those? I, I didn't have any concerns, but they had some questions or asked for clarification. That there, there wasn't, they didn't just make a, here, you should change this. Mm -hmm. They had questions. So I did address those questions, and I don't know if. So what, what you provided me this morning has been presented at the dais for all the committee members, which includes uh, Chair Davenport's comments regarding Shippo's comments. I apologize for the size. Maybe I should have gone with 11 by 17. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, so should we move forward through, go through the, yeah. <laughs> got it. All right. So, um, their first comments, um, to recommend including additions, um, to the definitions. Um, I believe that the word addition, I think this is what they mean. I mean, I don't think they're looking to add another definition for additions because I think addition is already included in alteration. That's right. So um, they're just recommending you add addition to the term alteration so that if somebody proposes an addition to an historic property, it would be included as an, a definition of alteration and would trigger the certificate of appropriateness requirement. So that was my comment, just additions added as an example of an alteration. So it's there already. It's not really a comment. <laughs> um, uh, I propose that, um, based on the SHPO's comment, that we delete um, changing of paint color. Um, that was comment number two. Any questions about that? Um, they, uh, their third comment, uh, they asked about does fill, what does fill mean, and they suggested it means site work, and I agree. Um, comment four, um, what was there? Um, so they were asking whether the comment or whether the design guidelines are general or specific, and our guidelines are um, not necessarily general. Uh, they do have separate chapters for residential and commercial properties. Mm -hmm. So um, I take it that the SHPO did not see our guidelines, design guidelines, which is... They've seen them, I think, a while ago. But So yeah, they didn't have those in front of yeah. them, so that's why they were asking that question. So that's yep. addressed. Yep. Um, the other thing that they ask about, um, uh, they had a question about landmarks. Um, and so I do um, agree that we should eliminate the word landmarks throughout the document. Um, and basically, um, um, it's eliminated and, and it's basically um, included within historic properties. So um, I'm not sure where that comment was. Um, hmm? And then um, comment six, um, let's see, what was their sixth comment? Uh, the terminology of the word landmarks and districts. So my proposal was to delete, quote, designated historic property and 
clarify um, historic property. There's a definition for historic property to be any building, structure, district, object, landscape, area, or site that is significant in the history, archaeology, history, architecture, archaeology, and culture of this community, the state, and the nation, and designated as such as a result of formal adoption by city council under the terms of ordinance. So basically, it's a, it's a. Um, combining uh, the definition of historic property with designated historic property. Mm-hmm. So we get rid of one <laughs> definition. Um, and so that applies to um, their comment number six. Um, again, deleting the word landmark here and throughout the document. Um, comment number seven, they're wanting to delete, what was it they were deleting? Contributing don't meet the criteria. Okay, so I, I agree that we need to delete um, section C. It does not individually meet the National Register eligibility criteria. Um, and then um, comment eight. Oh, um, I changed or I suggested or um, based on their recommendation. Um, I uh, suggested that the definition um, for ordinary maintenance, it should read ordinary or and or um, routine maintenance, if that's okay. Um, so um, comment 11, um, and here's where um, with the deletion of the word landmark, um, again, it's just reiterating, um, combining landmark within other historic properties and calling it historic property. Um, and therefore, that section should be called procedures for historic property recommendations. Um, their comment nine. Um, Again, it's again just um, going through the document and getting rid of the word landmark and combining it um, with historic within historic properties. That was twelve. Um, comment thirteen. Um, agree. It should read historic property designation. Um, comment fourteen. Revise as suggested. Um, The commission shall conduct a public hearing on all recommendations for historic property designations. Um, Comment 15, again, it's that landmark replacement. We're getting rid of that and striking through all the landmarks, words, uh, the word landmark. They gave us kudos, which is nice. (laughs) Thanks, Shippo. uh, again, section or um, comment 17, that's the replacing dra- um, landmarks with historic properties, striking through the landmarks. Um, these are all out of order. Comment 18, so just adding what the exterior is. Oh, the routine maintenance, again, um, making sure that that is included in the definition of routine and um, uh, routine maintenance. I think that's right. Are you sure? What is considered routine maintenance? So it is defined. So uh, what we would do is not use both terms, ordinary or routine, but we would okay. choose one and define it. So it's ordinary maintenance, which is the defined term, and it is defined as. Regular cyclical or seasonal care, upkeep, repair, or replacement of any portion of the designated historic property or landmark in order to maintain a safe, sanitary, and stable condition. This type of work does not alter the exterior of the property, building, structure, and does not require certificate of appropriateness or building permit. So the idea is that obviously ordinary maintenance shouldn't require a certificate of appropriateness. And I might add that that might be handled in more depth, uh, again, within the certificate of appropriateness and or the design guidelines. So, um, 
So where was I? More kudos. Um, and here's where the preliminary approval. So they're coming 14. Oh, okay, so um, they're comment 14. Why am I seeing you? Oh, that's my number. Anyway, um, they're comment 14. Since this is the only administrative review, but it's rather a period of staff review, um, they made a suggestion, and, um, and I suggested as, or I suggested this revision based on their suggestion um, that quote, it should read administrative preliminary design review affecting properties located in districts. Yes, and, and legal can adopt the uh, the uh, or uh, can do the can adjust the language as appropriate for the ordinance. Okay, good. The question here is just, do you agree with the comment? Yep. And yep. then we can make those revise. We okay. can make those revisions. Perfect. Okay. I do appreciate your <laughs> uh, preference for the term, and you uh, per, uh, that you prefer historic property. Okay. Um, so. We can use that instead of landmark and make sure that it's consistent because it's it is confusing all the different interchangeable terms. Yep. Okay. So Perfect. yeah, but we can, you know, get into those little. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they asked for um, their comment fifteen. They asked for a, defin a definition for adverse effect, and I provided one. Um, this is taken from the National Historic Preservation Act, Section one hundred six. There is also a, a definition of adverse effect per, that uh, SHPO provides in its glossary um, on its website. So that was the definition I was going to oh, add. Oh, okay. Does but it we can pretty it, much say the same thing? It's a, uh, not quite. It's a little bit shorter. Oh, okay. Um, but we can, have, like, you know, when we bring this back, okay, we, can, great. we can get your input on that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, their comment 16... Again, it's just edit um, that needed to be edited. 17, kudos, 18. Separate section for changes. And again, uh, um, yeah, in, in general, um, I agreed with that. So I agreed to remove um, or to, that's a, again, a an editorial change, I think, more than anything. Yeah, this I think is a is a the the ordinance needs to be revised to be a little bit more concise and, mm -hmm. okay. and consistent. Okay. So we can address that. Um, their comment number nineteen. Um, what did they? Oh, the the painting part, um, as well as the ordinary or routine maintenance, and I think we addressed that. Um, Mm -hmm. That will be defined. Um, uh, I also agree, yeah, to remove relocation as an action and relocation of historic properties, I should say. Um, comment 21. And again, I agree with their suggestion. And there's some rearrangement to meet that their suggestion. Um, and I totally agree with that. And that was it. So there was a lot of, oh, there was one more. This isn't anything. And acceptable and approved. Yep, that was the other thing. Um, their comment number 24. That was the last one. So. I appreciate you being so thorough, Blair. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if this helps answer question number two <laughs> for everybody. Um, it does, or oh, question number one. Okay, well, um, so I guess. You can tell yeah, I was just wondering. So, Michael, in this situation where you asked us um, as a committee for three separate, um, the three separate questions that we're trying to address right now, if we make a motion, does, do they need to be considered separately or in one motion? 
No, I think you can make a motion that incorporates the response to each of these questions. I mean, for example, if you agree with the SHPO comments with Chair Davenport's additional suggestions, you can make that part of the motion to direct staff to uh, amend the draft ordinance accordingly and bring that back before you. Um, what I heard before with the committee is that there's an interest in addressing contributing and non-contributing differently. We can uh, try to respond to that in the ordinance and include that in the revision that would come back before you. And the third qu question would be answered because your motion would be directing us to work on it and bring it back before you. Do I have to make the motion? <laughs> no, anybody can make the motion. I think the motion would be to accept uh, Shippo's comments uh, as um, co as responded to by Chair Davenport's uh, provided document and uh, direct staff to amend the ordinance to consider a uh, matrix type concept for not contributing and not contributing properties and bring back those amended changes to the commission, to the ad hoc committee. <laughs> so moved. Hopefully for final approval. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we just say ditto or well, do we actually it, have to it, say it? it since she <laughs> said it, uh, Member Jorgensen, you're, you're making the motion, so we would need a second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Do I need to make a, or not a motion per se, but um, next agenda item, or is it just assumed that this will be on our next agenda? Is it? I mean, yeah, this would be assumed to be on the next okay. agenda. You've directed us. This is what we'll bring back to you. Okay, got next it. Time. And so that concludes agenda item three. So agenda item four is the public comment period. Okay. Um, so now is the final public period for the evening. Uh, the public may call 702-589-9629. Hearing that there are no comments. Sir, did you have any comments? You're our only a person in the audience. Yes. You're welcome to come yes. on up. I would like to. Sorry, I don't do this for a job. I'm not qualified to be. But I know I can come. You up just need to state to your you. name. Sorry. Oh, my name please. is Dustin. Please. Dustin Wilkinson. Nice to meet you. And, uh, what is what are we gaining from this historic preservation society? Because my understanding is that uh, we fell short, and we were getting grants, right, at one point in time in the past, but we no longer get those. I mean, I could be way off subject. I mean, I only just get little bits here and there. So. Did you want to? Or... <laughs> well, typically, uh, the public comment period at the end of the meeting is for people to provide comment. I can certainly follow up with him and kind of give him some additional background. So certainly, it's an opportunity uh, for you to provide comment, but I'm happy to meet with you to discuss. Well, if you're qualified, that's fine. <laughs> Basically, this committee 
just this is a temporary committee and we are just addressing the ordinance or an update to the ordinance. There is a historic preservation committee. Um, a public comment is really just an opportunity for the public to provide their comments, not really an opportunity for question and answer or dialogue. Uh, but staff can certainly follow up with Mr. Wilkinson after the meeting and answer any questions he has. Well, when's it time to come and publicly talk to everybody involved? You're welcome to, to make any statements that you would like to make right now. Um, your time is limited to five minutes. Well, I did. Okay. It, public comment is an opportunity for you to provide comment. It's not a, a dialogue. Oh, no yeah. questions. No. Did I, I missed the meeting where we could ask questions. Uh, I probably did. I know I missed a couple, but... Well, staff would be happy to talk to you and answer any questions you have okay. following the meeting. All right. Sorry. Pardon my ignorance, <laughs> you guys. I don't do this for a job. I just moved in. Can I comment? Yeah. I still got a couple minutes. Please, <clears throat> go ahead. I just moved into a house in the Historic Society, and I deal with several properties with homeowners associations, and there's one reason why I bought this house is because I didn't have one. And maybe you guys are doing the right thing. I just don't understand. That's why I'm here today. And um, I just need to get some more information, and that's why I'm here. Hearing that there are no other comments, um, public comment period is closed. This meeting is adjourned. Whack. <laughs> <laughs>